Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our circle of love on this Sunday morning. So let's uh, let's begin with a prayer. Let's simply know that in this time of seeming division and turmoil, that the love of God, the wisdom of God, the order of God is directing each and every one of us right now that there should be no fear in our body, our mind, and our soul, because it is the Lord that guides us. And the Lord is the law of the universe. It's not a being someplace out there, outside of ourselves. It's deep within each and every one of us, and it is the reality of life itself. So we bless each other. We bless this country. We bless the world. And we know that everything is unfolding in God's divine order in this very minute. We simply do what's appointed for us to do, taking one step in front of the other, knowing that the light of God will guide our footsteps now and always. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. And before I turn it over to Ed, I want to remind you that uh, if you are seeing this on video, that this is only one piece of what we do. The other part of what we do is after the service, we turn off the recording and all of the people, since this is on Zoom, every participant gets an opportunity to participate, to, to share their view about the topic. And we all learn from that insight. So if you are seeing this on video, please, at 10 o'clock Pacific time, every Sunday, we are live on Zoom. All you have to do is go to our website, unity of love and the letter U, loveandyou.org, and you'll see a link to this. Come join us. So right now, Brother Ed is going to come over here and sing our congregational song. As I share my hope and heart, my love I come to know. As I come to know my love, I allow my love to grow. As I Thank you, Brother Ed. So, let me read today's, uh, today's reading is from, uh, from For the Inward Journey by Dr. Howard Thurman. It says, to those that wait, all things reveal themselves, provided that they have the courage not to deny in the darkness what they have seen in the light. Waiting is the window opening on many landscapes. I've said this before that uh, the way that I come up with what I'm going to talk about on Sunday is that Monday morning, I begin with the meditation and whatever rises up inside of me uh, is the focus of the talk. And then I meditate on it all week. Uh, what I do also is I send 
whatever that topic is to my brother Ed here and to John Pearson, because he does the, his writing. And this week, what came up to me really profoundly was the idea of waiting. Uh, the, the topic tonight, today is to those who wait. And it's, it just struck me so during this, this time that we're going through in this moment. You know, uh, waiting is just a natural thing. I mean, you wait in a line for the, at the store to, to be served. You, 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 we've been waiting in our homes for this COVID vi uh, virus to dissipate or to at least get a vaccine or something. We wait for everything. It's a process. And during the week, my, my brother, it came back to me with his, some of his ideas and it came down to waiting is a process. And in that process, we either progress or we decay or regress. And I, I agree with that. However, there's a lot more that's moved through me regarding waiting. I, I look at waiting as something that people do during their lifetime. And, and there are people that have waited for generations. I'll give you an example. For 400 years, African-American slaves have waited to receive their freedom from slavery. 400 years. Yes, laws were passed, a vote was given, and then all of a sudden, all of that was slowly taken back, piece by piece by piece, voter suppression ways, Jim Crow laws, you know, just so many different things that, that continue on even right now, right now. And what's happened is that there's been a master slave mentality that hasn't changed. And that mentality has now encompassed all people of color. Anyone who is not that perfect white American. So you have Latinos, you have, you have, Asians. You have all these people who are not that perfect view of the American that came and founded this United States with slaves. Well, that's continuing on today. And I'm going to tell you, part of that waiting piece, people get to a point where they're just exhausted, where they're totally spent. I was touched very deeply by uh, uh, Jacob Blake's sister, the man who was shot seven times in the back by the police who can't walk right now. His sister was very profound. She said, I haven't shed a tear. I can't cry. I am just tired of every one of these times where our people are shot, either killed and maimed. Why? You know, I understand this. Think, think about what's happened here. All of these, all these protests have been because of this injustice and inequality. And at the same time, when someone comes in with a gun a 17-year-old, I think he's seven, 16 or 17, with a gun and shoots two people in Wisconsin. The police let him go home. Whereas another person shoots one a, 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 another gentleman who was the opposite of that, and that person shot and killed. It's very interesting how there is more than a dual standard here. I know that uh, Kamala Harris said that uh, just today on one of the shows that there is a dual standard in the United States, and there is. There has been and there will always be until we change it. And now is the time. Waiting. 
there's another aspect of waiting. And that aspect of waiting is preparation. Because during the time that you're waiting, you have the opportunity to prepare, to review your strategy. Has it worked? Has it not worked? Do we need to make changes? Do we need to go in another direction? Or what we're doing right now, I'm hoping in my heart right now that the preparation that people, everyone can do across the United States is to prepare to vote. Be registered, get your, get your mail in if that's what, how you want to do it. Get it, make your choices, vote and mail it in immediately. There's too much darkness and, and, and confusion that's being spread around the country right now. Preparation. Waiting is a time to prepare, to get ready for this. Waiting's also a time to be patient. You know, as much as we want, because of all the mail-in votes, it will be impossible to have an absolute number of votes counted on election night like we normally do. It will be impossible. The probability is that it will be about a two-week difference from election day to the final days of really understanding the total vote. Now, I am hoping that the numbers are so large that that additional vote isn't going to mean anything. Patience. If you've waited 400 years to this point, with all the generations that have passed, a couple of weeks aren't gonna, isn't going to make that much difference. Waiting. Patience. There's so much behind waiting. You know, Brother Ed said, you know, that things can regress and regress. And yes, they have been. Over the past hundreds of years, yes, the equality that was given that should have been there to begin with has been taken away piece by piece by piece. By, by, there's so many different ways. There's so many ways of voter suppression closing down, as, as our brother Jim Wheeler told us, closing down all these voting places in uh, Kentucky and they're doing it all over the world, all over the country. Same as taking mailboxes away. I mean, this is, this is one piece after another of, of regression. But we as a people can move through this. I, I saw a piece about all the craziness that's going on, all the false ideas, all of these crazy theories, these conspiracy theories that are, are massing up. And where the last time we had such a, a, a craziness going on was during the McCarthy eras, when Joe McCarthy was accusing all these people with no facts that they were communists and anti-American. It's the same type of thing that's happening now, except the same people, people of color, are the focus. They have been. It's never changed. That has not changed since the inception of this country. It needs to change now. I see hope. I see hope in our youth. I see hope in the people that there is a change throughout the country, at least, if not in the middle of the country, at least in the edges of the country, on each of the coasts, where people are becoming more and more aware that everyone is equal. We're all in this together. But I'm going to tell you, and, and this word has been thrown around a lot recently, but there's been a lot of darkness going on. A lot of darkness in the thoughts that have been coming out, the words of people that have been coming out, a lot of negativity. And, and i got to tell you, it's strangling. 
even even for someone who like myself who is extremely optimistic it's strangling you you're in the dark and there's no way to get out that darkness is getting more and more obscure is making you totally alienated from everyone around you you have to start relying on the inner light the light of god within you you have to have faith you have to trust i trust god i trust right now i know that change is in the air i can feel it i can smell it i can taste it that positive change no one wants anything above and beyond anybody else no one says that they're better than somebody else the only thing that everyone wants is equality to simply be treated the same as everyone i mean that's been the desire of everyone straight through and every time it, it just appears that every time and people of color get to a place where they are equal some white americans chop them down they did it to black wall street in tulsa and even used aircraft to shoot people down 300 or 400 or 500 people were killed and an entire mile of 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 blocks were totally wiped out people's everything they were taken away and not one person was compensated for it that's not the only place this was an uprising in in another city where the white americans overthrew the government the the city government that was duly elected nothing happened it seems again that dual system there's two levels of justice in america somebody who does anything before they before they even do something they're shot they're strangled they're killed and then people uh, the, the one that got me so much was this this man dylan roof who killed all these people and they took him off and bought him a a burger they didn't shoot him they asked him to put down his gun people without guns are being shot brianna taylor she she did nothing she was in her own home doing nothing the door was knocked down and she was killed oh they made a mistake wow they didn't give the person the benefit of the doubt why because they were a person of color that would not have happened if it was a white individual very interesting everyone has waited there are some like the descendants of slaves have been waiting for 400 years waiting is a process but in this time we need to be prepared you know this this country was founded on what we call democracy the right for the people to run the country and the way you run the country is by electing people to do the appointed work for you everyone should vote there are countries that like australia if you don't vote you're penalized whereas in 2016 something happened while people waited they became smug they took for granted that hillary clinton was going to win and when almost half the people in this country did not vote that brought a different wave into the people into the country it changed the entire dynamic democracy is about everyone participating in government 
We've been waiting. You've been waiting. This is time to change. We wait. We get our, our ballots. We immediately vote. We immediately send them in. And then we wait. But this waiting is different. Because this waiting means that everyone participates and everyone has a say versus a small percentage. Now is the time. So let's get still for a moment. Let's turn within and let's know that inside of us is that divine light. No matter what darkness seems to be obscuring our view, no matter how dark it may seem to get, there is a light that guides us. We don't necessarily have to know how to get there. We may not even know where we're going. We simply have to have faith that the light within us will allow us to take the first step and then the next and then the next, and then the next. That it will light that way. It's our charge. It's what we can do in this fertile time of waiting. Transformation. Change. Equality, justice, these can all happen. It's one step at a time. Now, I know that there are no perfect candidates because we're all human and there's nothing perfect about us. But we simply have to hold people accountable. We have to, number one, participate. And number two, make sure that what they say they're going to do, they do. Or else you vote them out. And that's not just for the president that's running the country. But that's for the, your federal Congress people, your senators, your representatives. And also your state representatives and your local representatives because if you vote in each one of those areas and everyone is supporting each other that we're all in the same alignment with our desire for equality and justice for all then change happens but just like anything in life if you don't participate you're just sitting on the sidelines. You're a bystander. You're, you're a spectator. And whatever happens, you just have to deal with. This is up to you. It's up to me. It's up to all of us. We're simply here to have our say to be guided by that inner light within us, to allow the darkness to dissipate, not because we fought the darkness, but because we turned on the light. That's all we had to do. That is our opportunity right now. Turn on the light. Participate. Let's see change. This is not, you know, it doesn't take anything for people to be allowed to be equal. It takes a lot for people to be treated as equal. Now is the appropriate time. This is the moment. Thank you, Father for this and so much more. And so it is. Amen.
Brother Ed is going to uh, lead us in a song, one of his inspirational pieces. I hear people saying, we got to save this world cause it's starting to fall. That might be, but still it seems, there's so many things in this old world that ain't worth saving at all. But mankind's inhumanity. Fear-based ideologies, war, greed, inequality, social injustice and bigotry, and we're defended by our prejudice, divided by our fear. Tell me, who do we trust when there's only us, and where do we go from here? So I'm waiting on that new world Knowing that there must be more than this Waiting on the promise of a brand new world Waiting on the new world Waiting for the world to live as one Waiting for the vision to come to fruition Waiting on the new world <laughs> The human heart is an open field where visions wait to be revealed. And all our dreams are running wild and free. You can watch the new world being born, the formless turning into form. You can see the dream become reality. And we're imagining this dream we're in is happening right now and the impossible is possible it's possible somehow so we're bringing in the new world knowing that it all begins like this starting with the promise of a brand new world Bringing in the new world Knowing that the world can live as one Watching the vision come to fruition We're bringing in the new world the 
in a new world where love and unity will set us free in a new world we're bringing in a new world bringing in a new world the dream we believe in will be received in a new world the new world bringing in the new world we're watching the vision come to fruition we're bringing in the new world Thank you, Brother Ed, and uh, thank you all for abiding with us while we're still trying to get the uh, the sound pieces here <laughs> working properly. Uh, I know it's it's been difficult, uh, but uh, we're doing our best here. Uh, you, what you see on your screen right now is uh, this is our conscious sharing time. So you have uh, two ways to do that. You can either go to our website at uh, uh, unityoflovenyou.org and uh, just press donation and you'll go to a secure site and you can do uh, any kind of donation you want, you know, through a credit card or whatever. Or you can mail a check, which a number of people do. You, you have the address here. It's 2202 Pico Boulevard, uh, Santa Monica, California, 90405. So let's just stop for a second. Hold your hand to your heart. And just know that what you're giving is you're giving from your heart with love. And that what we're doing here is simply sharing love. It's an opportunity for all of us to expand and to grow. And as we complete our, our service today and we get an opportunity to share with each other, that sharing is an expansion of our heart even greater. So I, I bless each and every one of you. I appreciate all the, the gifts, tithes, offerings that you give. It's allowing us to, to do these things and to, to purchase more equipment to try to make this service better. So I just say thank you, Father, for, for each and every individual soul, now and always. Amen. Amen. So I'd like to just close out today before, before we do our prayer protection and just say that uh, people have waited for a long time and that this is the time, this is the place, this is the moment. Um, in California, um, the, uh, voter, the voter pieces are being mailed the end of this month, end of September. You'll have them in October, time to, to make your choice all the way, make sure it's all the way down the line. Don't just vote for the president. You have to vote for all your representatives because it's all those people who push forward the laws that will make the change. The president's just one person. We need full change. We need an opportunity for everyone to participate. And unless you vote, you're not participating. Okay. So let's get still for a moment. Let's know that the presence, the power, and the love of God that's always been here, that's deep within our hearts and the hearts of all of our forefathers, all of our ancestors, is the heart of love. And it's that love through the the way that we communicate is through that energy we call love. It's the divine connection that does connect us all together. 
Christian D. Larson says, it's the golden chains that bind us together. It's the love that we have for one another. It's the respect, the appreciation. And when you are allowed to express that, when you open yourself to that, you're expressing God on earth. So let's simply know that God is alive and well in each and every one of us. And that we're expressing it through love in this moment, moving on. And that we all embrace each other as brothers and sisters of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. So let's uh, do the prayer of protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Thank you, everybody. God bless you and have a, a blessed week. And just waiting is okay. Thank you. And uh, all those who are online, please uh, stay stay together here because we're going to be doing our our discussions right after we finish this recording. Thank you.